Well, good evening and welcome to the March 16th special meeting of the West Turlock Subbasin Groundwater Sustainability Agency Board of Directors. And now call this meeting order at six o'clock. Members of the board participating in tonight's meeting are in person from the TID boardroom located at 333 East Canal Drive, Turlock. Members of the public may also participate in person or utilize the Zoom's webinar feature or by telephone. Members of the public attending virtual have the opportunity to provide public comment via the webinar or phone features. For those participating via Zoom, please click the raise your hand button. For those via phone, please dial star nine on your keypad. Let's start with the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, Alna. Shinward, call the roll call of representatives, please. Alternate Director Abram. Here. Director Alvarez. Alternate Director Casey. Here. Director Croker. Here. Director Espinoza. Here. Alternate Director Lindo. Here. Director Maldonado. Here. And Chair Alamo. Present. We do have a quorum, so we'll proceed right into public comment period. Interested persons in the audience are welcome to introduce any topic within the agency's jurisdiction. No action may be taken on any item not appearing on today's agenda, except the board may briefly respond to the comments and refer the matter to staff or request to be placed on a future agenda. Is there any public comment? Any online? No public comments online. Thank you. Staff updates, budget update, Michael Clipper. Everyone, for the West Turlock um, account, that's as of February 28th, um, 2023, we had five hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty-seven dollars and fifty-eight cents. For the Basin combined account, we had um, seven hundred and forty thousand three hundred ninety dollars and seven cents as of the same date. Any questions? Thank you. Up with staff updates. Uh, Technical Advisory Committee update, Michael Cook. Good evening, Chair Alamo and uh, directors. Uh, since your last meeting, uh, well, the, the meeting in November, I should say, we've received 15 one five new well permit applications at Stanislaus and Merced counties together. Um, I should have checked on that, but it's probably about uh, 12 from Stanislaus County and three from Merced County. That since, seems to be the typical ratio. And since the counties adopted this program, we've reviewed 71 well applications to date, so 7-1. And all of those have been uh, recommended for, for approval that they would not adversely impact the implementation of the groundwater sustainability plan. We also um, wrote a letter of support for the city of Modesto. They're applying for some uh, drought relief funds for South Modesto and the community of Empire. And we've also um, worked on the environmental impact report. You'll find out more about that tonight. And we did establish two ad hoc committees, one to work on the 2023 annual report and a second one to start looking at an action plan for exceedances of minimum thresholds. So. If we work on a go forward basis as we do our monitoring, we start to see that uh, groundwater levels or uh, surface water interference or groundwater contamination starts to exceed the thresholds we've established in the plan. We put that committee together and start looking at, okay, how are we gonna address those impacts and, and, uh, and deal with them? So we're starting to kind of put that group together and that's, that's a requirement of our GSP. So that's what we've been working on. Any questions for me? You say new, some of those are replacement wells, aren't they, Michael? Yeah, many are replacement wells, and primarily the Stanislaus County ones are um, what they call backup irrigation wells. So these people have access to surface water, always Turlock Irrigation District water supply. And so, as you remember in the letter we write, they have to use that service supply first and use the well as a backup supply. So again, the impact to our groundwater table, we feel, would be minimal over time. And some, as you mentioned, are replacement of wells that have gone bad. Any other questions? 
None. Next, we have the consent calendar. I think all we have on that is our regular meeting minutes. So I get a motion to approve the consent calendar. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the meeting minutes, the consent calendar? You're not all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, moving on to I, agenda item G, uh, number one, round two, multi benefit land repurposing program grant. Debbie. Uh, Debbie Montabato. I'm the plan manager for the GSP and also a member of the technical advisory committee. Um, the next item for your consideration is a letter of support for a land repurposing grant application being prepared by Xa Basin GSA. Um, the Grand Water Sustainability Plan identifies overdraft mainly on the eastern portion of our sub basin and includes a variety of projects and management actions to implement um, either bringing more water into that area or reducing groundwater use to achieve sustainability. So land repurposing is one approach to meeting some of those needs. Land repurposing could include following, but it can also include um, transitioning to other beneficial land uses um, with reduced water requirements. And so um, there is funding available from the Department of Conservation to further explore and develop local appro locally appropriate strategies for multi-benefit land repurposing programs. The grant emphasizes basin-wide programs, collaborative efforts, and support from local stakeholders. Uh, Mike Tietze, who is a coordinator of the East Terlexa Basin GSA, and Sarah Wolf, who is the technical advisory chair for the East Terlexa Basin GSA, are heading the effort to develop grant, the grant application um, for the East Terlexa Basin GSA on behalf of the subbasin and um, are here to talk about the application process, what a multi-benefit land repurposing program might um, entail and include, as well as opportunities for collaboration and local benefits. If funding is granted, a basin-wide program would be developed that could be implemented in the various areas of the sub-basin on an as needed basis. Um, after a brief presentation, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions and consider authorizing the chair or his designee to sign a letter of support for the project and a commitment to engage in the process should grant funding be awarded. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mike Tietze, who has a presentation. And I think it's up there right now. That's right. Thank you, Debbie. Can everybody hear me OK? Yes. Okay, well, thank you, Chair Alamo, and thank you, uh, uh, board members, uh, for this opportunity to talk about this important grant. Um, uh, Debbie mentioned uh, we are definitely looking at land repurposing as something that is in our toolbox, and uh, this round two uh, grant uh, solicitation uh, affords us an opportunity to start this uh, with grant funding by first developing a basin-wide uh, multi-benefit agricultural land repurposing plan, and then uh, implementing that plan on a, uh, uh, on a pilot basis. Uh, these are block grants. Uh, there are $40 million available that's renewed annually. And the individual grants can be up to $10 million and there's no, no local cost share required. Uh, medium and high priority basins under a drought emergency declaration are eligible, so that's us. Um, next slide, please. So uh, the program goals, priorities, and requirements include, um, of course, reducing groundwater use and increasing recharge. Uh, that's sort of a base entry point for any land repurposing that would be covered under this. But uh, they want to increase the regional capacity to repurpose ag land while also providing other benefits. And those include community health benefits, economic benefits, or economic well being, water supply, flood control, renewable energy, habitat, and climate benefits. We have to demonstrate multiple committed partnerships and collaboration with other agencies and stakeholders. That's a key um, attribute of this particular grant program 
that we really have to demonstrate, you know, a level of collaboration and commitment regionally so that they can see we're increasing the regional capacity because this kind of plan requires regional cooperation and coordination. Uh, they want to, us to promote community engagement. So there's an outreach and education effort uh, that's included in this more than just uh, the, the, the usual amount. Um, they are looking for benefits to disadvantaged communities. And then we have to demonstrate fiscal and administrative capacity to administer block grants. Uh, next slide, please. So the different task deliverables are uh, developing a multi-benefit agricultural land repurposing plan. So that will start with regional studies and evaluations as needed to uh, identify and prioritize where different kinds of repurposing projects uh, could take place. And then uh, uh, providing an implementation framework and procedures. The main portion of the grant needs to be focused on, or most of the grant needs to be focused on developing uh, at permitting, uh, developing permitting and implementing uh, re, uh, 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 agricultural land repurposing projects. So that's the focus of the grant. And it would include uh, project planning, design and permitting, as well as um, distributing and administering incentive payments for making that happen. So we can structure this any of various different ways, but, but the vision is to provide incentive payments for different kinds of repurposing projects. It can also be used for land and easement acquisition and land transfers. Uh, we need to then also have a task to support the capacity needs of our partners in implementing this program. And we need a program for outreach, education, and training and then monitoring as to the effectiveness of the land repurposing for meeting the various different benefits. Next slide, please. So just some examples, it's not limited to this, but uh, some examples would be uh, orchard swale or riparian restoration and low impact water retention features. So for example, we can decrease the water demand of orchards in the rolling foothills by removing uh, trees from swale areas and repurposing them as seasonal wetlands and riparian habitat. Uh, that would increase uh, stream base flow and it would also result in peak hydrograph attenuation. So there's flood management benefits if this is uh, implemented uh, throughout a particular watershed. Uh, local water recharge and storage improvements could be implemented. So land could be repurposed for storage basins and storage reservoirs that would provide uh, direct and in-lieu recharge opportunities. Uh, photovoltaic project development or agrivoltaics could be included. Uh, and then land use changes, including recropping, fallowing, rewilding, conversion to rangeland. And then there's any number of other possibilities, but these are the, some of the key ones that we want to focus in on. Next slide, please. So what we're asking for uh, is a letter of commitment. This is a little bit different from your, uh, from your ordinary letter of support, but it is you know, non-binding <laughs> until we enter into a memorandum of understanding. So the, uh, the letter would be letter of commitment that would describe uh, the interest uh, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the board, uh, of the GSA and its proposed involvement. And we've provided some information uh, to Debbie as to what we anticipate uh, would be, that involvement would be. Uh, there would need to be a commitment to development of an MOU if a grant is awarded. And then grant funding would be available as appropriate to support the involvement of staff or other involvement uh, as needed. Uh, the support activities that are envisioned include uh, TAD, uh, uh, TAC and ad hoc committee review and oversight of the plan preparation and program implementation. Uh, staff review and support for development of the multi-benefit uh, multi agricultural land repurposing plan, uh, assistance with community outreach and engagement support, and then uh, support with uh, uh, entering a web page for this program on the Turlock Groundwater page. Um, and then uh, support for adoption and establishment of frameworks for sub-basin-wide grant administration and accounting. So uh, uh, WTS GSA has taken the lead um, and we're very grateful that they've taken the lead on administering some of these grant programs uh, and it, it can get fairly complicated and tedious. Uh, you know, I've done it before, so we have some knowledge, but we think we can greatly benefit 
from uh, uh, from some uh, some mentoring and uh, and and support uh, in in that area. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm available to answer them. Questions from Mike. Any comments from from Tech? I think uh, we're just looking for. Go ahead, Debbie. Um, due to the timing of of this, uh, the grant application and the process, this this item has not yet gone to the TAC. We're going to inform the TAC next week at their meeting as to um, the, where the process is. But so so from a TAC perspective, it it hasn't had a TAC blessing, so to speak, as we typically try to take things to the TAC first. But the TAC <laughs> just didn't allow for that this time. Go ahead. Comment. I would just say though that when we bring this, if we brought this to attack before, I know this sounds kind of backwards, but this is something that we generally support because this would implement the GSP in terms of additional potential um, opportunities for repurposing on the east side and even potentially on the west side if there's areas where we could put recharge basins in or other things that would work with obviously landowners, willing landowners. It's a good thing. So again, it's it's consistent with the GSP. It's what we're trying to do. We're very glad the East Side's taking the lead and we'll provide the support as needed. What's well, the pleasure of the board? Entertain a motion authorizing myself or a designee to sign the letter of support. I'll move to approve Is there a second? I'll second. Popular moved and second. Is there any further comment or questions, concerns? Nothing online. All in favor, please say aye then. Aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Moving right on. Number two, consolidated final program environmental impact report. Michael Cook. Your name's on there. The joy of being the chair, you get to delegate everything. So I'm happy to delegate Kelly Searle from ESA. They've been our consultants putting this um, programmatic environmental impact report together for the implementation of the GSP. This is all grant funded. And at this time, I'll hand it over to Kelly. Thank you, Michael. I'll say that I'm joined here with my colleague, Meredith Parkin. Um, and again, good evening. We're pleased to present to you the consolidated final program environmental impact report for the Turlock Subbasin GSP. Next slide, please. We would first like to acknowledge the funding for this project. Next slide, please. The California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA requires that a final EIR, or in this case, a final program EIR be presented to the decision-making body of the lead agency or the West Turlock Subbasin GSA, and that the decision-making body review and consider the information contained in the final PEIR before approval. So this evening, we will review the final PEIR, which is a consolidated final PEIR, meaning that the draft PEIR and final PEIR were combined into a single document, pro providing users with a single and complete point of reference. We will then summarize public comments received on the draft PEIR and the document changes and discuss next steps, leaving time for some questions. Next slide, please. CEQA is not required for adoption of a GSP, but is required for implementation of the projects and management actions, referred to as PMAs, that are proposed in the GSP. A program level CEQA document or a PEIR was prepared to streamline future CEQA analysis. Next slide. Development of the PEIR followed a public review process per CEQA requirements, including a public scoping and public review period, the consolidated final PEIR was posted March 6th to the Turlock Groundwater website and is being considered for certification by the West Turlock G Subbasin GSA, the CEQA lead agency this evening. Next slide. Here are the contents of the consolidated final PEIR. Next slide. The scope of the PEIR is consistent with the GSP and that it considers the types of PMAs described in the GSP, 
It evaluates at a program level the potential impacts of typical construction and operations associated with implementation of the types of PMAs. Next slide. So CEQA, analysis, or CEQA requires an analysis of potential impacts to various environmental resources, and these next few slides will summarize what the environmental analyses found. The PEIR identifies no impact or less than significant impacts to the following resource areas. Next slide. The PEIR identifies less than significant impacts after mitigation to the following resource areas. Next slide. For those resource areas, mitigation measures are proposed with a few examples listed here. Implementation would be the responsibility of the PMA proponent. Next slide. Finally, the PEIR identifies potentially significant and unavoidable impacts to the following resource areas. Note that not all PMAs will have significant and unavoidable impacts and that the CEQA lead agency would conclude impacts in project-specific analyses. Next slide. So with regards to public comments received on the draft PEIR, two oral and four written comments were received. The majority of commenters supported the PEIR and either requested clarifications or additional information regarding site-specific analysis. Other comments that did not pertain to the scope of the PEIR are included in the final PEIR for consideration by decision makers. Text revisions provide clarifications, amplification, or corrections identified since publication of the draft PEIR. Next slide. As mentioned, many comments sought project level analysis or site specific details, for example, addressing the use of floodwaters and the potential harm to special status fish, wetlands and riparian habitat. We've provided a global response that once the specific characteristics and locations of the PMAs are known, proponents would identify the relevant potential environmental impacts of constructing and or operating the PMAs including through hydrologic fisheries and or cultural analyses as applicable. We encourage you to review Appendix C of the consolidated final PEIR for comment letters, responses, and all revisions made to the draft PEIR. The West Turlock Subbasin GSA considers certification of the consolidated final PEIR. The East Turlock Subbasin GSA as a responsible agency is scheduled to certify the PEIR following the action of the West Turlock Subbasin GSA on March 23rd. Next slide. The consolidated final PEIR is available on the Turlock Groundwater website and at several local libraries. The record of proceeding will be made available at the offices of the Turlock Irrigation District. And finally, we are planning a workshop at the April 11th Joint TAC meeting that will focus on Appendix A, a project or appendix F, a project and management action specific checklist that can be used by the GSAs and other project proponents implementing PMAs under the GSP to streamline the CEQA process. Next slide. With that, thank you for your attention, and Meredith and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kelly. Any questions? Looks like you did a great job, no questions. Thank you. Well, it's a big document, a lot of work. Looks like it's all in order to me. I'll entertain a action item. We've got a resolution in front of us here. <laughs> we got it properly moved. Is there a second? Seconded resolution number 2023, number one of the year, I guess. Uh, any further questions or comments? No comments? Hearing none. Go ahead and call the vote, please. Alternate Director Abram? Yes. Director Alvarez? Alternate Director Casey? Yes. Director Crooker? Yes. Director Espinoza? Yes. Alternate Director Lindo? Director Maldonado and Chair Alamo. Yes. Resolution passes. With that, uh, we we'll proceed on to agenda item H. Any other comments from the board? Any other items? 
that, we have one item for closed session, Conference of Legal Counsel Anticipated Litigation. So I'll ask for a motion and a second to move into closed session. Is there a second? second. Any further discussion? Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We are now in closed session. I would just like to report out a closed session that there's no items to report and declare the meeting adjourned at 636 and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.